can we apply computer algorithms in human life after all we humans created these algorithms they must have their origin in our daily lives for example the very first dictionary was published in 1755 ever since that moment we have known how to find a word in a dictionary you open the dictionary at some place based on where you are you decide whether to go to the left half or the right half when the computers came around that became the binary search algorithm something that we used to optimize our daily lives became an algorithm but is the reverse of this possible are there any computer algorithms that we can use to optimize our daily lives in this video i'm going to show you eight such algorithms i've taken these algorithms from the book algorithms to live by this book contains a wealth of knowledge that i cannot cover in one short video i highly recommend you buy your own copy of this book let's do this Let's start with the optimal stopping algorithm. Imagine you are searching for a new apartment. You have only got a month to find it, and once you pass on an apartment, you cannot go back. How do you know when to stop looking and choose the best option? This is where 37% rule comes in. The 37% rule says that for the best chance of picking the optimal option, you should look at 37% of the available options and then choose the next one that's better than all the ones you have seen so far but where does this magical number of 37 come from it's actually derived from mathematical constant of e which is also called euler's number 1 by e is 0.37 i don't want to get into the math here but there is a way to show that 1 by e gives you the highest probability of selecting the best option let's see how you can apply this rule in your daily life as a programmer imagine you are choosing a programming tutorial to learn a new skill say you have 10 options you can quickly skim through the first 3 or 4 after that you pick the first one that's better than all the ones you have seen before this way you're not wasting time watching every single tutorial but you're also not settling for the first decent one you come across striking a balance between discovery and making decisions can save you countless hours in your learning journey next we have explore versus exploit trade off this concept comes from the world of gambling specifically from multi armed bandit problems imagine a casino with multiple slot machines each with a different payout rate your goal is to maximize your earnings but you don't know which machine has the best payout do you keep playing the machine that has given you best results so far or do you try other machines to potentially find a better one one simple algorithm to solve this problem is called epsilon greedy algorithm the idea is very simple with probability epsilon choose a new machine to explore and with probability 1 minus epsilon continue on the current machine to exploit as a programmer you are always gambling with your career new technologies are popping up every day should you stick to what you already know and are good at or should you branch out and learn something new the key is to find a balance if you only exploit you might become obsolete as new technologies emerge but if you explore all the time you will never develop deep expertise in anything using epsilon greedy algorithm maybe dedicate 80% of your time to your current stack and 20% time to explore new technologies this way you stay on top without sacrificing your expertise before we move on i want to tell you about my free email newsletter called instabite on instabite you will get solutions to popular interview problems asked by top tech companies we also share top 100 coding problems system design articles and much more and the best part is that it's completely free you can subscribe to our newsletter at instabyte.io let's talk about caching caching is nothing but storing frequently needed information at a place from where you can get it easily one popular caching algorithm is called least frequently used algorithm or lfu lfu discards the least frequently used items first when the cache gets full it's based on the principle that if you have not used something often in the past you are less likely to need it in the near future but how can we apply this to our daily lives here is an interesting application write a script to find your most frequently used terminal commands and then create an alias for these commands in your bash rc file this way you are basically creating a cache of your most used commands for example instead of typing git push origin master you could just type gpm it's a small change but over time it can significantly improve your productivity now let's move on to scheduling in computer science scheduling algorithms determine the order in which the tasks should be executed to optimize for efficiency two common scheduling algorithms are earliest due date and shortest processing time earliest due date algorithm prioritizes tasks with the nearest deadlines while shortest processing time algorithm focuses on completing quick tasks first but how do you apply these principles to your own task management the key is not to follow one algorithm blindly the real power comes from combining them intelligently for example you can use shortest processing time in the morning when your energy is high to build some momentum and then switch to earliest due date in the afternoon to ensure that you are meeting 
meeting your deadlines. Another way to combine them would be to use earliest due date for your most critical projects and shortest processing time for everything else. You should be flexible and adjust your approach based on your specific situation and goals. Next, let's talk about exponential back off. In software engineering, exponential back off is a technique used to manage retries of failed operations. When an operation fails, Instead of immediately retrying, the system waits for a short time before the first retry and then progressively increases the wait time for subsequent retries. Exponential backoff helps us prevent system overload. By spacing out the retry attempts, it reduces the risk of overwhelming the already stressed resources giving them time to recover. This concept can be directly applied to debugging code. Many developers when they face a stubborn bug, keep attacking it relentlessly without a pause. We keep staring at same lines of code retrying same tests over and over, hoping for a breakthrough. But often, the most effective approach is to introduce a deliberate break. Start with a short 5-minute break after the first debugging session, and then gradually increase the duration if the bug is still there. This allows your mind to reset, leading to fresh perspectives and unexpected solutions. Next, let's talk about overfitting. In machine learning, Overfitting happens when a model fits too closely to a limited set of data. This causes the model to perform poorly on new unseen data. The model has essentially memorized training data instead of learning the underlying pattern. One of the solutions to prevent overfitting is to use simpler models with fewer parameters. Complex models are more prone to overfitting because they can capture more noise in the training data. This concept applies beautifully to learning programming or any other skill. There are countless videos or articles on which programming language to learn which course to take and which framework to master. It's very easy to get overwhelmed and overfit to all this information. But sometimes, the simplest approach is the best. Pick a popular programming language like Python and spend 4 hours every day for 6 months building things. This straightforward consistent approach might give better results than trying to find the most optimized path to learn programming. Next up, we have Bayesian updating. It's a fancy name for a simple idea. Without getting into the math, here is how it works. You start with an initial hypothesis or belief about something. Then as you gather more information, you update your belief accordingly. It's a formalized way of learning from experience. In other words, keep updating your beliefs based on new evidence. Let's apply this to productivity techniques. Take the Pomodoro technique for example. It suggests working in 25-minute sessions with 5-minute breaks. Start with an initial belief of how effective it might be for you. Maybe you think it will boost your productivity by 20%. As you use the technique, Gather some data. How much work are you actually getting done? Are those 5-minute breaks turning into hour-long social media sessions? Use this information to update your initial belief. This way, you are not blindly following advice, but scientifically testing what works the best for you. The key idea here is this. By consciously updating your beliefs based on evidence, you can make more informed decisions in all areas of your life. Let's move on to relaxation. In algorithm design, relaxation means simplifying complex problems by loosening constraints constraints, making them more manageable and solvable. Solve this simpler version and then gradually reintroduce the constraints to solve the original problem. Let's take the example of this very famous traveling salesman problem. If a salesperson needs to visit several cities, What's the shortest path that goes through each city exactly once and returns to the starting point? If you do not already know, let me tell you that this problem is NP-hard and not exactly easy to solve. To make it easier, we can relax the rules a bit. We can forget about returning home and visiting each city only once. The simpler version is like finding shortest set of roads that connects all cities. This is same as finding the minimum spanning tree of a graph and there are many algorithms that can solve it. If you do a depth first search or DFS on the minimum spanning tree you just found, and add a return to the original city to that, you have an approximate solution to the traveling salesman problem. While it's not perfect, it's much quicker than finding the exact best route, especially when there are a lot of cities. This approach of relaxation can be a very powerful tool in tackling any complex problem. Let's apply this principle to building projects. Say you want to build a complex web app with user authentication, database integration and real-time updates. That's a difficult task for a beginner. Well. Let's relax the problem. Start by creating a static web page using HTML and CSS. Once you are comfortable with that, make it interactive with JavaScript. Then introduce a backend with basic routing. Gradually, you can add more features like user registration, database connections, and finally, real-time functionality. By relaxing the initial problem and tackling it step by step, you have made the learning process more manageable and less overwhelming. That's all from me. Do not forget to subscribe to Instabyte if you are preparing for tech interviews. My name is Sahil and I'll see you in the next one.